As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Make Movies Great Again podcast. My name is Matt Vieira. With me, as always, Adam Bernardino. And we are here to remove cynicism from the box office. How is everybody doing? I'm great, Matt. How are you? <laughs> There's our audience right there. It, 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 the, the biggest learning curve on a podcast, I think, is re- you have to realize that you don't have an audience. We, yeah. I was actually uh, podcasting uh, from, for my work, for my day job, this past week. And one of the like the guy I was podcasting with like looked into the camera and asked a question, and I was like, kind of like, uh, the, they're not going to answer you. That's yeah, not that's, gonna you. that's not how any of this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> um, what's new, Adam? What's going on? Uh, just working like a dog and watching movie trailers, getting Damn right. trying to trying to get the funds for our freeze chamber for all these. <laughs> Fantastic movies we have coming out, dude! You are telling me the free the freeze chambers are not cheap. No, they're not. I <laughs> saw one online. And it was a pretty penny. Let me tell you. I'm trying to get the same model that holds Walt Disney's head. Okay. And, and they're not okay. cheap. <laughs> not cheap at all. So yeah. I'd like to be frozen until all these movies come out. But this this is a great time of year because it is. We're it's, summer is upon us and like. Super Bowl just passed, so that heated us up with all the, the movie trailers for what's coming out in the yeah. summer. Yeah, it's blockbuster season, baby. That's it. We're here. This is all it. All right, so let's get into our trailer of the week, trailers, or you know anything we've seen to hype us up for something ca- coming down the pike uh, this week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we saw a trailer at on the Super Bowl, at the Super Bowl, not at the Super Bowl, while we were watching the Super Bowl. Not a millionaire. Um, yeah, I know. Seriously. Uh, it's the fifth installment of this franchise. I personally love this franchise. I don't actually know what your, what your feelings are about, about this movie. I love it. I love it too. Okay. I'm so, a big fan. Although I did never see the fourth one. Okay. Well that, uh, we'll, we'll get into that real quick, but so Pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean, however the fuck you say it. I don't care. Dead Men Tell you know, No Tales. Exactly. That's. Changed that's, the title. It was Dead Men Have No Tales. <laughs> Is that what it said? <laughs> they changed it to this instead. <laughs> it's probably a good move by uh, by Disney, I believe, who I believe still does all the pirates uh, stuff. Uh, but anyway, so this is the fifth installment, like I said already. But the important thing to know about this movie is this is the first time the entire cast, like the original cast, minus Kiera Knightley, which I'm still holding out hope for, is she'll back. Probably, she'll probably peek in there. I hope. I I really hope so. There's like all these things saying that she's not, but. I would love that because you have obviously you have Johnny Depp back who hasn't has been in every single one of the movies. Yeah, you don't you don't have a franchise without him. Yeah, like, you, you go, don't have Jack Sparrow. With no, him. I mean that that's his. That, I mean that's his. That's his money. That's his money maker right there. Is, is Johnny Depp is um. Captain yeah, he'll Jack put Sparrow. out a he'll he'll I'm a, I like Johnny Depp, but he'll put out a couple of bad movies and then be like, hey, you know what? Let's get my Let's, let's go, get the brand name back up and do another pirate let's movie. Go, let's go back to the old bread and butter. Let's uh, let's yeah. go back to a pirate. So also like Orlando Bloom is making his return, and this is his first time. This is his first time back since the third one. He wasn't in the fourth one. Jeffrey Rush is back. He's actually been, he's in, been all, in all of them. Yeah, he? he's going to be in all five. I actually really love Jeffrey Rush in these movies. He's one of my favorite bar- as Captain Barbosa. He's one of my favorite characters. He is like the. Like shiny example as like just like a fucking snake pirate. Like he at one point he, he was working. Real, I think that he actually is a pirate. He seriously, dude. I mean, and I in like from his time back when he now get now I might be mistaken, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Mystery Men. He was the bad guy at Mystery Men, right? He was. He was. He was the mayor or something, but he was the bad guy. In the Mystery. no, it was um uh, Casanova Frankenstein. Was his name <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Casanova Frankenstein. He like would smell, or he had like he would smell his pinky or something. I have no fucking clue. I ever forget. But anyway, he was a fucking creep in that movie. But he is a pirate, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm super excited for the fifth one because now they add Javier Bardem, who is you know notorious bad guy because No Country for Old Men, and then the James Bond movie, uh, Skyfall. Skyfall is the one he was in. Yeah, Skyfall. I mean, he blonde hair. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He looks like a crazy person, but so he is Captain Salazar in this movie, and he's a he's a number one. He is a phenomenal actor, and he is a 
a born villain. Yeah, absolutely. He br- he he brings a lot of a more. He brings credit back, not credit. He brings a lot of prestige back to this franchise. I guess you could say. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's because, another big name. It's a big name to have in the yeah. franchise. I mean, don't get me wrong. Having P- Penelope Cruz, right? Penelope Cruz in the yeah, fourth she one. Was, uh, she was in four. Um, I didn't see it, but it she was wasn't. It, I like. I still like it only because it was a traditional. It was a pirates movie at heart. It had. It had the, like the terrific score. It had like the great like action scenes, which like you know, I mean, swashbuckling action scenes. So I really enjoyed it. swashbuckling. You like that? I do. So I I really enjoy these movies, and now it seems like they're like this is like you know they're bringing it back, and I don't know if they'll do another one after this, but I just I'm really sure they will. I, I maybe mean, I. I'm I heard they were. I, I heard they were going to do a crossover with the Fast and Furious movies. Oh my God! Don't even tell me that. My head would explode. <laughs> don't tell I, me I, that. I have to quit my job and just so, stay the movie theater. So what's the crossover though? Is it Vin Diesel on a pirate ship, or is it Jack Sparrow driving a Ferrari? Well, I think it's Vin Diesel. Is somehow he's figured out a way to get his car <laughs> to go on water to okay. operate in the ocean. Does it have a sail? <laughs> it could. It could. It could have a sail. It could have a sail. You know how he likes that's, the old school the stuff. Is he lets the yeah. sail up <laughs> so, and it's blasting forward. Perfect. That's awesome. So, uh, <laughs> second trailer we want to talk about yeah. is not really a trailer. Uh, it is a trailer, basically. It's yeah. to get everybody hyped up for the Avengers: Infinity War. It was a featurette. They they like. I mean, people have known this, but it confirms that we're going to get to see Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Star-Lord in the same movie. Yeah. Three amazing characters played by three actors born to play them. So it's something to really get excited about, and this cast is going to be stacked, absolutely stacked with heroes. Yeah, it's, I mean, and I think that they kind of, they, the people at Marvel really pull the weight off my shoulders, like, as I have anything, like, I don't have anything to do with these movies, but... <laughs> Seeing Civil War, like I was like wondering how they were going to handle that many heroes on one screen, and they right. and they, they, they flawlessly. I mean, in. one of the best movie, not only the best superhero movie of the year, one of the best, one of the best movies in general of the year. Civil War was just fantastic, Second and so best superhero movie. I I I I, <laughs> I do understand one of the best superhero movies of the year. Uh, Batman v Superman being number one. Number one. Um, but the. I think this this feature is really cool because it kind of connects three different aspects of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We'll we'll be calling the MCU from here on out, just so people don't get lost. Um, you have Iron Man, which was you could argue the first in all of these movies. I mean, the first in all of these MCU movies, right? Yeah. Two thousand eight was the first one, and then uh, Captain America shortly a- short after. Captain America: The First Avenger is. A hell of a movie. One of the one of the best in the in the Captain America franchise, no doubt. I mean, obviously, but um, so I was doing a little research today, and so I, like I was saying, Iron Man is the first one in the in the in the new MCU universe. You know what I mean? Okay. But but I actually found, and I'm going some sidetracking right now, but I actually found out that um, Ross, General Ross, who is played by William Hurt, who we'll get back to later for another reason. Um, he's in the Hulk movie from 2008 as well. Right, the one with Edward Norton. Yes, and he, it technically comes out before Iron Man, I'm pretty sure. So he technically is the first person in the MCU universe. Uh, in, yeah. in the MCU, I'm not going to say in Marvel Cinematic is, Universe. Is Liv Tyler going to be in it then? I thought I had seen something that Liv Tyler was going to make a sneaky appearance. It's, if that's true, don't tease me. Please yeah, don't tease sorry. me about Liv Tyler. Okay, so anyway, back, back to what I back to the main track. So anyway, so you have like the old, the old, uh, the old guy. You know, you have Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Then you got the young kid who's like the future of the MCU. You mean arguably the future of the MCU? Because who knows what ha- what's in store for all the guys that we know as the Avengers and as all these superheroes? You know what I mean? That could right. be. You know, Sp- I mean, Spider Man is it's his job for the taking. Once all these guys. Yeah, I mean, th- recastings, deaths. I mean, we've seen it in comic books. Characters die. That's what happens. You replace them with other guys, new guys. And they come back. But... People, ex- yeah, people come back from the dead, and that's a whole other story for another day. Then you have Star-Lord in the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is another like facet of the MCU. And I, I was actually talking to Lindy, and I was explaining to her, like because she really cared or asked, 
but I was explaining to her this feature, and she uh, she was like, but why is Star-Lord and the Guardians of the Galaxy in the Infinity Wars? And I was like, because they are Marvel superheroes. They're in, this is, like, their thing, and they're going to be in that. And she didn't, she didn't quite make the connection between the two, because that's how, like, good of a job Guardians of the Galaxy made it seem like they are, like, it they have stand nothing. On yeah, and, stand on itself. Yeah, and they have nothing to do with Earth. Big. They have nothing to do with those guys on Earth. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're doing their own thing right now. So it's kind of a really cool. And so now you have the three. You have those three guys coming together and kind of, like, kicking off the, the. I don't know what they're, I don't, I don't know if this phase is technically four, the. I think it is. Yeah, is it technically phase four? Now it's kicking off phase four. We're coming to the end of phase three. Yeah. So yeah. really cool. I, I mean, is there anything you're particularly excited for, for Infinity War? For Infinity War? I don't know, man. I'm excited. I'm just... Something... I'm excited for the whole movie, basically. But something yeah. I I would be really, really excited to see happen, I would... I know Thanos is the guy. Thanos yeah. is the main villain in the Mar- Marvel Universe uh, at this point. Yeah. Um, but I would love to see... Even if it's just a, a quick thing, I would love to see Red Skull make a return. Man... I am with you on that. I that wasn't what I was thinking, but now that you say it, I am absolutely with you on that. Yeah, I would love to see that. Also, did um, hasn't there been t- there been talk of maybe like the Fantastic Four, like the rights reverting back to Marvel? I'm not sure if you know, maybe you know more about this me than me, uh, or maybe I'm making it up. But if that's the case, and they're gonna keep going Phase Ten MCU. <laughs> I, I'd love to see the the Avengers take on Doctor Doom. Like, I, if this yeah. is, this is, like I'm getting so far ahead of myself. But just, <laughs> there's uh, there's so ma- there's so much room for adding. I mean, and people think like I talked to someone uh, recently, and they're like, "Well, after after Thanos, like, wh- what could we possibly do? It's going to be all reboots. It's going to be all um, origin story movies." And I'm like, "No, well, you can continue this for like." Forever, infinite. Like, oh yeah, there's like there's a reason that they Brie Larson is cast as Captain ex- Marvel. Exactly, and and she, I'm going to get into this later, but she is cap- as Captain Marvel in the comic book. She kicks off the second Civil War in a whole other breed of of superheroes. It's like a whole other thing, and you still yeah, have they're, guys they're like pretty. They've set themselves up nicely. Yeah, you still have guys like like you said, Cap- Doctor Doom, Galactus. You have all these huge villains that nobody has even talked about yet like right that that once it now that the the model is there where spider-man now sony released their rights to um spider-man and sold it over to marvel or however, however that deal went down i don't know i'm not i'm not a wall street guy but <laughs> all i am all i do know is i'm a spider-man guy and i think that the people whoever who owns do you know who owns the rights to the fantastic four fox is it fox so fox. so same thing with the x-men too. Yeah, X Men has Fox has X Men. I'm fine with the X Men not being involved because I kind of like the the way they oh, yeah. do their own I, things. I mean, but I, I totally picture X Men as as being its own thing also. But Fantastic yeah. Four would be awesome. Fantastic Four would be great because Doctor Doom. The Fantastic Four, I yeah. think, I feel like would fit in more with the Marvel universe than the X Men universe. Definitely, and I would like to see Tony Stark go up against Doctor Doom because he does it in the comic books, and I fucking love that. I just love their dynamic together because yeah. they're both like. Basically the same guy, except they're like they're a they're a fine line. Yeah, right? like Tony Stark could be Victor Von Doom. Exactly, Victor Von Doom could be Tony Dude, Stark very like, easily. Yep, they're mirror images of each other. That's why I love it. I that, that's why when so when when I was saying what's your favorite part, my favorite part is I can't wait to see like all these guys who have never met. I can't wait to find like their counterparts. Like I could see Ant Man and Ra- Rocket Raccoon getting along real well. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, which would be which would be hilarious. Like, I, I I love that stuff. So I'm super excited. the The featurette literally showed us nothing except a tiny little backdrop. But I'm I have a raging uh, infinity erection for it. <laughs> so super right. super excited. Let's hop into our uh, one of our topics for this week. Yep, big, big topic. news for us. Huge uh, news as two gigantic Batman fans is. Uh, we talked about Ben Affleck last week stepping down as the director of the Batman, and we, while we were saddened by it, we, we, you know, we can see what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. But w- the news of the new hire for the Batman is Matt Reeves, director of Planet of the Apes, uh, and forthcoming um, War for the Planet of the Apes. 
uh, I love these movies. Um, yeah. I thought he did an amazing job with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I, I can't even, I can't even, War of the Planet of the Apes is the best movie of the summer that nobody's talking about. Yeah. He and so I think that it says a lot that he directed Dawn and he directed War, right? Right. Um, but he also wrote War, so it kind of shows a lot. Like they really let him take a hold of this franchise, like for the third installment, which is kind of crucial in 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 a, in a in a trilogy like this. Or or yes. so far, it's a trilogy. Um, I, I'm really excited for that. So we know we know he can direct really good CGI action, which is not. A huge crutch that I hope or that I think that the Batman will you know will have like I think that they're going to do a lot of practical effects in it, uh, hopefully. Um, yeah. But I I think that they couldn't have put it in a. a you know, I think I don't know even know if we really I think we kind of touched on it a little bit last week, didn't we? We didn't say him by name, but I think we said like it would kind of be cool if like if we like, might someone, have. I, we, I know we've I, talked about these. Uh, we've talked about them in relation to each other, and uh, I just like. Did some checking, and he also directed Cloverfield. So just another oh. example of what you said. Like he's done large-scale CGI yes. movies, yes. And with with the like the brains, because Ben Affleck still helped write the script. Yeah, he's an amazing writer. Yes. Jeff Johns, the man in charge at DC, helped write the script. Yes, the man in charge. Like they. I I I feel like this movie is in really good hands. That's awesome, and and like um with Cloverfield too, all very dark style movies. Yeah. War of the Planet oh, of the Apes, Dawn I mean of Dawn of <clears throat> If you're a plan of the uh, a fan, sorry, of the new Planet of the Apes movies, and while Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the first one was really, really good. Yeah. I thought the second one was better and it was like you said, it's grittier. Dark, yeah. Much darker. And from the the teaser that we've seen of War for the Planet of the Apes, it looks very dark. Yep, yep. It does. It really, it, and I think that fits perfectly with the Batman. And anybody who complains about a Batman movie being dark, I will personally go to your house and say not nice things. It, if you can't take a dark Batman movie, you do, you don't know Batman. I mean, that's the go I watch mean, the one with Val Kilmer and it's, George Clooney. <laughs> you need to, it needs to be dark. It needs to explore areas of Batman that like like you know, I mean that that frightens not frightens the audience, but like it's. That's what it... I mean, Batman is a tortured soul. Like, he is absolutely tortured. The death of his parents. I mean, in like... In front of him. In front of him. Like, oh, like starting with that. Like, his whole life. Living a life of solitude. Like, even though he seems pretty pimp. This new Bruce Wayne seems pretty pimp with the ladies. Oh, yeah. This new Bruce Wayne. He's got it, he's got it all figured out. <laughs> um, so, I'm just going to read a quick quote that I got from Vanity Fair. Um... Which is it's just, it's just Ben Affleck's words talking okay. about stepping down as director. So uh, he said, "Performing this role demands focus, passion, and the very best performance I can give. It has become clear that I cannot do both jobs, talking about acting and directing the film, to the mm -hmm. level they require. Together with the studio, I have decided to find a partner in a director who will collab collaborate with me on this massive film." Oh, so from what it sounds like is Ben Affleck will still have some directing responsibilities. I think I think this is genuinely a split down the middle decision between the studio and Ben Affleck. I think yeah. that Ben Affleck really wants to give it his all as the Batman, which I can absolutely agree with. With all the flack that he got, I don't understand it, but all the flack he got from Batman vs. Superman, he wants to really focus on the Batman. He wrote it. So the story is there. He's not worried about that. He wants to interpret the story in his acting. Let the director, let a, a, a let experienced, exactly, let an experienced director take the reins and, and do this film justice. So that's good. With that happening, it also sounds like that the studio at first, the studio when Ben Affleck was still directing, the studio wanted to do some rewrites. I'm, I'm so happy that they decided to back off, or so that's what they say. They yeah. decided to back off, and really, it didn't need much rewriting, which is great yeah, that because a, a, a really positive note out of the the DC camp this week was yeah. that everybody at the studio and you know the head cheese involved with making this movie seemed to be on board with Affleck's script. Yeah, yeah, and I'm 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 great with that because if there's anybody outside of the DC camp that's going to write, I I'd, I'd like to see what Ben Affleck can do with one of these scripts because it could it. It could save DC. Like, it really could. Not that DC could. needs saving right now, but 
the way the and like we're gonna see these movies no matter what. But Correct. there's a lot of people that if it keeps going the way that like the reviews that like Suicide Squad got, like it it's not gonna go very well. And they have to like pull their storytelling together you and like tighten it up. Be at the movie theater on a Friday or Saturday night and be like, ah, you know what? Maybe I'll go see this. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they see all these all this bad press about them. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the thing. Like we we need you need to get more of the pe- uh, like more of the people like those kind of people like to go see it. You don't want to like scare them away, which is a whole other issue that we have to do a whole other podcast. We could do a whole podcast on it about asshole fucking movie critics. We need a couple of hours. We you need a couple of hours and like a, a handle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> but it's ridiculous. But I think that DC genuinely, I think their writing and their storylines could be tightened up. And I think following tight to Batman, you're I mean you're your golden god of this universe. Just You're, like he, he's your Batman is your bread and butter of this universe. Exactly, Batman is is uh, your Iron Man. He absolutely is. It's Iron, it, it's built around yeah. him. It's Iron Man or it's Captain America. It's like it's really it's Superman, Batman, it's Captain America, it's Iron Man. Those right. are your guys. Build around those guys. They did a great job with the first Batman, uh, first Superman movie with Henry Cavill. Oh, Man of Steel. That love, movie. That movie is awesome. Love Man of Steel. Hug tight to those characters and and keep the story going, just like Marvel's been doing. And also take some cues from your own books. I mean, you you do great comic books. You do great animated TV shows and animated movies. The formula is all there. Yeah, just follow it. I mean, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna see it anyway, DC. And not that you're actually gonna listen to us or fucking hear this podcast, but <laughs> you know. Fucking leave Ben Affleck alone. Let him do his thing. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll make something great. Not maybe. He definitely will. He will. As the captains of the Ben Affleck fan club. We believe in Ben. We, we believe in Ben, and we believe in his decision to step down and let Matt Reeves take the helm. So I think that this I think that the, the director is all but settled. Yeah, I think um, it is too. There was a couple other guys they had in mind. This guy, Ridley Scott. Have you heard, heard of, him? of him? Heard of him? Okay. And then uh, Fide Alvarez, I believe is how you pronounce it. He's the guy who did uh, most recently Don't Breathe and the remake to The Evil Dead, the 2013 Evil Dead remake, which I love both those movies. I don't know if he'd be right for a Batman movie because he's like clearly a horror, like thriller, like director. So I don't know where like jump scares and blood fits into like the Batman. I don't know what it's, what it's going to be like. I could see where blood would fit in, but. I don't know. I mean, Ridley Scott, too, would be an interesting... I've convinced myself that I'm very happy with Matt Reeves. If something changes, I'll be... I'll have to convince myself into that, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm very content with where I'm at. I I think they're going to stick with him, too. I think it would would be bad um, bad character or bad, I don't know, whatever, to, to like, change directors again and kind of end up turning into, like, the Flash pre-production, which is, like, going nowhere fast, which fucking sucks. Yeah, but uh, they'll figure that out too. They gotta get this out of the way. Like I said, bread and butter, you're Batman. Stick with them. Stay right. tight, tight to Batman. So. All right. So you want to hop into our next topic? Yeah. So uh, we talked a little bit about one of my most anticipated movies of 2017. Obviously, is Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, Star Wars. Um, I just wanted to talk quickly. I wanted to see what your thought. We didn't really get into it, but I want to see your thoughts on what you think that title means. Now. Nobody has come forward, and like, um, obviously, Mark Hamill's lips are sealed. He's not going to give it away. Josh Gad is is filming Murder on the Orient Express with um, with Ray with uh, what's her name? God, why I love her. Why can't yeah with Daisy Ridley, my girlfriend, and uh, and so he's been like, it, it's actually this hilarious thing. If you go on his Instagram, he like films videos or his Twitter or something, and he films videos of Daisy Ridley like while they're not shooting and, like, tries to get her to, like, leak stuff. It's it's so funny because he's just a huge Star Wars fan. But, so, she's not leaking anything. Now, in the Star Wars universe, Jedi is both plural plural and singular. Right. So, what do you, so what, who, are, who is the last Jedi or who are the last Jedi? I don't know if it's... So, here, here's what I was thinking. Um, and I just thought about this. So, in all... Seven, eight movies now. If you count Rogue One, uh, the Sith has changed. Um, it's it's been a few different things, and they they uh, they touched on it in the Force Awakens. 
you know, there was the First Order, and there's... Uh, maybe I'm going in the wrong direction with this. Maybe I'm sounding like an asshole. But, um... <laughs> no, it's anyways, all theories. I think, it is, is, I, think it's, I think it's plural. Yeah. I think it's plural. Uh, I think that this is, like... I think this is kind of, like, m- m- like mentioning towards or, like, hinting at, like, the last, like, the last Jedi, like, the group that are going to stand up to the First Order. Like, right. Because at this point, there's obviously not a lot of Jedi around. The last Jedi in this in this battle of the dark and the light. Yeah, exactly. And if they win, maybe they won't be the last. I don't know. I mean, it's because here's the thing too. It's clearly Luke. Obviously, is a Jedi. I mean, that's where everybody knows that. Yep. It's quite obviously Rey. They refer to him as the last Jedi. Yeah. It, Force Awakens. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, the movie's probably going to revolve around Luke, but it also has a bigger meaning of it's. Obviously, Ray has force powers. She's sensitive to the force. She is. Right. Doesn't I mean, mean she's sure. a Jedi, though. That's also true. Now, that argument I would make towards Finn. I think he's very sensitive to the force, but I don't think he's a Jedi. No. I don't think so. I I'm don't. Not, I, I, I know. I, I don't want to break your bubble here, but I don't think Finn's a Jedi. I want him to be one. He. I don't think he needs to be. I think he's going to have a whole other role on yeah, his I think own. He could be that. The thing is, like... That Han Solo ex- to her... Exactly. Han Solo wasn't a Jedi, but he's... He's still arguably the badass in the galaxy. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Like, So, I, I think there's probably going to be a few people in hiding. Um, I don't know who, but maybe, like, people Luke has, like, been in contact with. Who knows who? Like, I don't know if it's going to be new characters or, like, hints at old characters revisited or, like... I don't know, relatives of characters. And then you have the whole thing with who's who are Ray's parents, which is, like, the question that everybody's obsessed with. I don't think it's going to... In the end, I think it's going to be shocking, but it's not going to be shocking. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the theories are all out there. It has to be somebody... Because Ray says it's quite... she. I don't know if she's busting balls or trying to get us to, like, lead ast- like go astray, but she says that we know who... It's quite obvious, I think she said, quotes who Ray's parents are. Which the I, actress? Yeah, Daisy really said that. Which I don't I don't see how it's quite obvious, that. but also I could see that it could be like, you know, there's the, the bigger the, the bigger mystery might be Finn's origins. True, true. Very true. Cause he they both have interesting like they also they, both of them could have surprises because he says, I was taken from a family, I'll never you know, blah blah blah, you know and, and he was forced to train in the first order, right? And then also, Ray obviously has those scenes in the movie where she's, you know, she sees a a ship fly away, and uh, that dude on Jakku is like holding her there, and she's right. You know, her but that, the only the only time like Daisy really talks about her family throughout the movie, and the only time Finn really mentions it is at at first, at, at like in his first yeah. Well, no, when he's first asked well, about it, but I mean, it's not. I'm saying it's not yeah. brought up more than once. No, yeah, yeah. I so I think I. I mean, I think they both have interesting, uh, like histories that they need to explore. I could see Finn's just getting pushed under the rug because it could just be how we think it is. Parent, Finn's parents were killed. He was taken. He's a first order stormtrooper. You know what I mean? It, it kind of would be disappointing because I love I love layers. Like I would love to peel back the layers on on Finn's story, but I don't know. I mean, Ray. I think personally, I think that it's Obi Wan. I think she's she's the son, the daughter. Sorry, of Obi Wan. Yeah, it could be. I it just makes the most sense. Who else? I mean, she can't be in the tree of the Solos or the Organas. Like that yeah. would be that would be too much. She could be Luke's daughter. Maybe. I don't maybe, know. Maybe he conceived her immaculately. I. Well, yeah, I, I, but then, but then, sexual. <laughs> that big twist. <laughs> Did he gave birth to Ray? Uh, but then there's the thing of like, Ray was not super little when her parents left. Does she remember what her parents looked like? Maybe. That's the other thing too. Like she wasn't a baby. She was like a couple years old. Well, she. But she, I think she was old enough to remember what her parents looked like. Is what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, think- so here's another thing. Who haven't we seen or who haven't we talked about that could be Ray's dad or mom 
And I, I think, it, again, it leads back to Obi-Wan. No, Obi-Wan wasn't really talked about, but yet Obi-Wan came to her when he went to go pick, when she went to go pick up Luke's lightsaber. Yeah. Both, both Ewing McGregor and, um, shit, who's the original? Um, anyway, the original Obi-Wan, Sir or something, he was a knight, he was knighted. Um, yeah. But anyway, so that's what I have to do. Do you have anything else you want to add about The Last Jedi? Um, the only thing is I want to... I, I just want to add one more thing about Finn. Uh, FN2187. Um, that when he... I I definitely see what, what you're saying and, and other people, you know, other, our other friends that watch Star Wars, you know, Sean, like, he agrees and that he, Finn, Finn doesn't isn't a Jedi and doesn't have to be. But I go back, like, I keep going back to that one scene at the beginning of the movie where he, Kylo Ren tells the stormtroopers to cut that entire village down yeah. with their blasters. Yeah. He, there's something in him, he refuses. Yep. And <clears throat> so everybody in the village is, is killed. And, you know, nobody knows. No, like, no, it, nobody would know that he didn't fire a shot. Yeah. Unless they expected his blaster, of which they were planning on doing, but Kylo Ren looked at him. He yeah. knew. He saw something at him. And then, when it was brought up again that a, a trooper helped Poe Dameron escape, he knew exactly who it was. Yeah, but do you think that that could be Kylo's force abilities? Just like kind of like reading the situation. I, I think it could be both too, but. Maybe. You know what I mean? Like, it could be just Kylo, like, being like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's not acting. So like, maybe you're saying he just sent something wrong, not necessarily that Yeah. That's special. But like I said, I, I'm not saying that Finn isn't Force-sensitive, because I do think he has that, but I just don't think that he's going to have a Jedi story like, like Rey will. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I think it's really all about her. I think it's all about her, just like the first three movies were all about Luke. I think it's going to be, like... It's it's her story. I mean, it's not only her story. Obviously, there's so many other great characters to like, you know, to talk about and to be about. But I mean, then you have the, the t- talking about characters like when will Boba Fett return? Will Boba Fett return? Right is the question. I'll tell you when. As soon as Michael Fassbender is all done with his contract, <laughs> is that what's gonna happen? Do you think it's gonna be? Him? I don't know. It could happen. I remember seeing that a long time ago. I remember seeing that they. When they were talking about doing it, that he was their number one choice, but he's like super popular right now and yeah, I mean, doing big franchise stuff. So and, and clearly, the Star Wars franchise is not afraid of hiring big names, as they just hired Woody Harrelson as um, young Han Solo's apprentice or yeah, like slash awesome. like mentor, and then also uh, the Queen of Dragons. Queen of Dragons in space. Uh, is in space with her space dragons. Uh, she's also going to be in the Han Solo movie, which is awesome. I think that's going to be great. They killed it with Rogue One. Absolutely. Donald Glover is a young Lando. Oh, my God. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. This, that movie is going to be so fucking good. Oh, yeah. my God. Freeze chamber me now. Yeah. Freeze chamber me now. I need to make it to that movie next Christmas. I'm going to start going to the gym more. <laughs> I got I to gotta make it to next Christmas. It, it, I they, I can't I can't express how good Rogue One was like in actually in like gr- like good English vocabulary words because that's how fucking awesome it was. I just loved what they did with it. It's such a good movie, such great actors, such great characters. So it really, is. It, it, really yeah. it, br- it brought both it brought the two trilogies together perfectly. Yes. Perfectly. Yes. And all the character like the characters were amazing. And it was a, it was, it was a real, it was a true Star Wars movie. Absolutely, oh, so good. I, I, I want to see that again. I can't wait till that. When did that hit Blu-ray? I gotta get that shit. Not soon, soon probably, right? I mean, that shit's. Remember when we were kids and we used to have to wait a fucking you had decade, to wait like a school year. <laughs> we had to wait a fucking for a movie to come out on on video on VHS, nonetheless. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is taking so long? As soon as that shit gets out of the theater, stop printing those VHSs, motherfucker. You want to make money or not? I want to see fucking Cinderella at home. I want to see Aladdin at home immediately. Give me that shit right now. God damn it. But it's great now. Like, get a Blu-ray like a week after it's done playing in the theaters. Sometimes you can still see the movie in the theaters when it comes out on Blu-ray. Yeah, sometimes it's on like a streaming service while it's still in theaters. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's awesome. I love it. Get to see movies. Although there is a, I mean, I won't get sucked into this conversation. We'll have this for another time. But there is a, there is something about going to the movies that I love. Like there's no distractions and all that shit. So yeah. Anyway, Last Jedi. That's that. We can talk about it all day. We'll end it there. Um, if you have, if anybody, about, uh, I want to talk about something I'm watching this week. All right. And something I'm reading. Tell me everything. Because I'm an adult and I read things. Yeah. Even though what I read isn't, it's for adults. It has. Well, I mean, you so also read watching, adult stuff. I'll start with what I'm watching. I, I started. I, I was really hyped up for this show when I first heard about it. Taboo on FX with Tom Hardy. Um, big Tom Hardy fan. And uh, I, when I first heard about this, I remember hearing, "Oh, Tom Hardy signed on to do a TV show," and I was like, "Really? He's it's Tom Hardy. He's Bane, and he's so many other things that just you know uh, are don't don't come to the top of my mind uh, the first thing." But um, he's a pretty he's a big name actor now, and doing a TV show, I was like, "Oh, that sounds that sounds kind of strange." But then I read about what it was, and it was based off a series of stories that he wrote with his father, and it was. <clears throat> really dark and about the uh, about trade during the Revolutionary War in England, and then I saw the trailer for it. I was like, "Oh man, this looks awesome!" But I really hadn't had a chance to, you know, sit down and watch it. And all the snow this weekend uh, in Boston, I was able to I was able to sit down and finally catch up five episodes in, and I loved it. I had no, I don't know if you haven't had a chance to to sit no, down. No, I yeah, haven't. No, yeah. The cast is basically Tom Hardy. And people that were on Game of Thrones but are dead now, or people okay. that were probably cut from Game of Thrones. Okay. Did you watch Boardwalk Empire? Yes. yes. Al Capone is in it. Okay. The actor okay. is Al Capone. Well, I uh, can't. I, listen, I need a. I need to rewind every one of his lines because I have no fucking clue what this guy is saying. What's like? What's like the accent? Very thick English accent. Okay. Like very thick. I don't even know how to describe it. Like nineteen, like eighteen, fourteen English thug accent. Okay. So uh, have you ever seen Peaky Blinders? No, I haven't. Okay. But people, somebody has somebody's told me that that's uh, it's a good comparison. Because my brother loves that show, and I can't understand a fucking word anybody's saying in that show. <laughs> hey, it's still good, and I just can't understand a fucking word anybody's saying. Um, but Taboo is about uh, this character, James Keziah Tulaney, who returns to England after being in Africa uh, for 10 years. People thought he was dead, and they're and they're still piecing to get like we're at this point. We're still piecing together, uh, you know, how he survived and what he's been through while he was in Africa. Um, but basically, everybody's afraid of him. Everybody thinks that he is the walking embodiment of the devil. Okay. And he, uh, he he owns this piece of land that's very valuable, both uh, to a single person to the crown of England and to the Americans. It's a strategic piece of land on the western coast of the United States and Canada. And he owns the rights to this land. Uh, and so it's a, it's a battle between himself, uh, the British crown, the Americans, and the East India Company, which is at the time the biggest corporation in the world uh, in the early 1800s, in the 1800s really. Okay. Uh, they basically owned anything that was traded land sea and they said if things if they even pointed out in the show that you know if you could use the air to transport things they would own that too <laughs> but obviously that's not the case in the early 1800s um no plans but the tom hardy drives the story there's a lot of really good character actors in it and uh it's a really good show um there's only eight episodes in the first season i cannot see it being a, a only eight episodes uh, there has to be a season two uh, obviously, we're only five in, so it's got to wrap up. But I've really enjoyed it. I'm really, I'm really interested to see where it goes. So they've got a fan in me. I, I, uh, I think I would be interested in that. I think I would definitely watch that. Yeah, you should. Um, what I'm reading and what I talked to you about on the phone today, and I, I dug back through my my comic book files, is uh, so in the whole re DC rebirth. Um, I didn't. <laughs> So there's not too Batman is not an, too much Batman is not enough Batman. But I <laughs> held myself back, and I own, I so I read Justice League, I read Batman All Star Batman, and I read Batman Detective, and Batman Detective is something I had never been into before, and I'm really into it now. Yeah. And something you and I were talking about on the phone, and something I'm really interested in, 
is <clears throat> how this DC Rebirth, they do all types of crazy crossovers that everybody seems to love so much. And at the end of this, <clears throat> at the end of this uh, issue of Batman Detective number 950, uh, spoiler alert, Tim Drake is dead. Uh, Batman is basically sees a uh, a program or let me let me flip back for a second it um I, I just to like talk to those those crossovers there's been the monster men crossovers with detective comics and bat and i think just batman and nightwing and nightwing those were awesome they had the crossovers with suicide squad with justice league fantastic so they've been hit they've been knocking out of the park with the yes comics. exactly so now i've got my feet i've got my feet where i need them to be um, so, Tim Drake, uh, Red Robin, dies in the early Rebirth, first couple of issues of the Rebirth of yeah. Batman Detective Comics. And so, at the end of this issue, number 950, they flash back to uh, months ago when they're together. And Tim Drake, not arguably, is the smartest Robin yeah. that there has ever been. Yeah. Is the smartest Robin. And he points out to Batman, like, listen, we need to have a talk. And he, he confronts Batman about... You know, him recruiting this team that he's working with in Batman Detective that includes uh, Batwoman himself, uh, Spoiler, Orphan, even Clayface is on this team. Mm -hmm. So he's got his own sort of team of misfits in Batman Detective comics. And then he's got Nightwing. Nightwing always has his back. No, Nightwing will never leave Batman. He's always got his back. Uh, I read Red Hood and the Outlaws. Red Hood is in his own way, working for Batman, doing his own thing with the Dark Trinity, him, Bizarro, and uh, Artemis, who's a, who's a step below Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about letting Damien go off on his own, form, his, form the new Teen Titans. He's talking about Batman, all-star Batman, how he's training Duke to be something completely different. Yeah. Than I really like Duke. I really, exactly. really like Exactly, he's training Duke. him to be something completely different. And then he, he questions him, what are you doing, building your own private Justice League? Are you preparing for a war? And Batman doesn't say anything. Yep. When Bat Dan doesn't say anything, Tim got him. So I'm really <laughs> excited to see I'm really got excited him. to see where this this Batman Justice private Justice League yeah. is going. But that's the shit I'm talking about. You got these fantastic DC writers writing for these comic books. This great series, Detective Comics, which is, you just read 950. It's been going on for 950 issues, and they're still coming up with a creative shit. Like, make that leap over into the theaters, man. Um, yeah, that's all I gotta say. So I'll, I'll lose my mind if I ever saw something like this coming out in theaters. Oh my god, I, the even, whole theme. Yeah, I mean, even like the way they did the Killing Joke as an animated movie. Um, I would love to see more comic book animated movies if they can't get it to like go into theaters like a traditional live action. Like, how much would you kill to see even an animated feature of Court of Owls? Oh my God! Right, I mean, I for, almost started watching Gotham this year because I uh, heard they were going to do a Court of Owls. I that's what I heard they're doing. I really need to start watching Gotham. That's a whole that's a story for another day again. But yeah, uh, yeah. put that doctor for next week. Yeah, uh, yeah, we should we should remember that. Um, we can talk about that all we want. We can talk about comics. So, so what are you watching this so, week? And so, what are you reading this week? So what I'm watching this week, I, I've been watching a lot of different things. Like I said, uh, I'm watching uh, Lemony Snicket's a series of unfortunate events. Series is still great. I'm about halfway through. I won't talk about that again. What I did watch recently, though, and Netflix just refreshed their library of movies, and the 1998 Lost in Space movie popped onto my queue, wow. and I just needed oh. I needed to watch it because I have that on DVD, so I can watch it anytime I want, but I haven't seen it in a while. It's one of those movies where you, I loved it as a kid. And I really needed to watch it again. Like, I always need to revisit it, like, maybe once a year. I need to revisit that shit. Yeah, so, I, need to, I need to refresh. It, I'm, need sure, to I mean, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it, right? I mean... A long time ago. It, it basically, like, now that I'm watching it with, like, keener eyes, it, it still holds up. I love it. Love the story. Love the, the cast. Um, but it holds up more like how tv shows are done now like the cgi is not great obviously it's you know it's from the late 90s and it didn't probably get a huge budget right um it, it it's, it's kind of like if you're watching like supergirl or arrow or flash it's kind of like that kind of animation not animation cgi 
Um, well, it came out. It came out in that time period where like CGI was brand new. And, it, and it's it's either you were doing CGI like how Jurassic Park and Industrial Light and Magic were doing CGI, or you were doing it. It, it like this, like this kind of stuff. It's not terrible, but it, it, it and it also doesn't take away from the story. So I'm fine with it. You know what I mean? But you know, you can tell it aged. Um, th- I mean, the cast is amazing, amazing. Like I said before, I'm going to get back to this. William Matt Hurt, Blank, w- William Hurt. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. William Hurt, who was Thaddeus Ross in the you know MCU, plays uh, Professor John Robinson. Then you got Mimi Rogers, who's from Austin Powers. You know what the, happened to her? I love her. I think she's super hot. And then Heather Graham, who's also from Austin Powers, among other movies. Good casting. Um, Lacey Chabert, who I don't really know what she's in now. Jack Johnson, who like fell off the planet after like 2003, who was the yep. kid, Will Robinson. Gary Oldman. Gary yeah. Oldman. Dude. Commissioner Gordon. Matt LeBlanc. Great, great cast. Love the movie. I think from, from, my, from my personal taste, it doesn't get any better than R2-D2. But... If I had to pick a second robotic companion in like a sci-fi movie, it's got to be either an android from the Alien movies or fucking Robot. And that's his name. It's just fucking Robot. I'm sure he has like a technical name to it, but they just he's, call him robot. it's Robot. I mean, that's what in the original like 1960s show, and please someone mis- like call me out on this if I'm wrong, but the kid, Will Robinson, who makes these robots, calls it Robot, like Robot fucking awesome this robot is so badass i think i still have my toy from when i was a kid like the fucking blue robot with the two arms and shit it's a little different it's a little more advanced than the original one that was on the tv show although there's callbacks to it in the, in the movie but i love this movie so good so like it's one of those movies that where the story really makes you think like almost like how when you watch a back to the future movie you have to think because it has like that whole time space implication hyperdrives the shit first like that. time i ever watched back to the future i thought i'd I got, like I had to sit that like I had to <laughs> got, I watched all three. I sat down and watched all three in one day and I was like having a nervous breakdown. Dude, that's, watching the first one I was like, Oh my god, are they gonna get back at, are they gonna get back to the future? You what watched all three? Happen? You watched all three at once? All three in the That's same a time. death sentence, dude. You must have contemplated for a long time after that. I did. I did. I, I took a break between two my, and three. My head would hurt. My head would hurt. I mean two so one and two really has the ones where you have to really think. But three, two. I mean, it's like the all the, those. I kinda, t- honestly, I kind of zoned out in three. Th- three is just fun. It's just a fun movie. I, I I love all three of those movies. I think that trilogy is a masterpiece. The music, the acting, the visuals. I mean, it's just a masterpiece. But yeah. it, you really for like like Lost in Space, uh, you have to really think about like the storyline, which I really like, and it kind of like it kind of like hides crimes like where like you know maybe the acting isn't so bad here but there's like this bigger thing happening where you don't have to really you don't even think about that you're like how the fuck are they gonna go back in time and stop this spaceship from launching i don't understand what's happening (laughs) gary oldman turned into a giant spider what the fuck is going on but i love it and so i watched that this week um so that's what i'm watching well that's what i watched but yeah you get it and what i'm reading right now i'm trying to catch up on my marvel books i'm i'm just like just behind on my DC books, but my Marvel books are hurting severely. Uh, I haven't really read because there really hasn't been anything that good coming new. But the ones that I have been reading, uh, Civil War Two and, and Captain America, Steve Rogers Captain America specifically, because there's also Sam Wilson who is also now Captain America in the storyline of the comic books. Yeah. Um, but Civil War Two was really really awesome. It kind of follows the same. No, I'm not gonna say cookie cutter. But it's the same formula as the Civil War one books and also the Civil War movie. It's like you got you got Captain Marvel and you got um, you got Danvers, Captain Marvel, and you got um, Iron Man, Tony Stark, sticking yep. his nose in everybody's business once again. Uh, and so you have this this uh, inhuman uh, Ulysses who can see. Um, and this is not a spoiler. This happens in the very first book. I'll try not to give any spoilers out. But Ulysses can see into the future and, or see a possible future. And so Danvers, uh, Colonel Danvers, uh, Miss um, Captain Marvel, 
is using him to kind of stop crimes before they happen, a la, like, Minority Report, like that mm-hmm. type of shit. So there's, like, some really, but there's really some big, really big implications, like some shit he's seen, like Miles Morales, the new Spider-Man, um, killing Captain America, all this crazy shit. So it's like the, should you act on things that haven't happened yet, or should you just, uh, or you should you use any advantage you can to, like, stop, people from being killed you know what i mean and, and like act on that so it's like that whole moral ground tight moral tight rope they walk so it was good it, i think it had a good conclusion i'm not going to give it away if there's any comic book fans listening um comment or reach out to us if you want me to if you want to talk about anything that happened in any of the books we talk about we don't want to give away too many spoilers um but yeah so civil war 2 and then captain america steve rogers captain america is a whole storyline where um He's actually a sleeper cell for Hydra. Whoa. He's, he's actually like this entire time Steve Rogers has been a bad guy. And the whole fu- time? Yeah, this whole time. It's fucking wild, man. It's That's fucking awesome. wild. It's like it like it opens up. It happens. It starts at, uh, right towards the end of when Civil War Two is happening, and Steve Rogers is with his mom and dad when they're kids and his dad's like a drunk and like beats his mother and like this this lady comes out of nowhere yeah is this lady comes out of nowhere and like saves the mom and like 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 basically like karate moves the dad and like the dad like walks away and goes home but then he takes um captain america's mom and 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 you know and little steve rogers out to dinner and they're talking and she ends up inviting Captain America's mom to like a neighborhood watch meeting, she calls it, and it ends up being a fucking Hydra meeting, and Red Skull's there. Whoa! Yeah, like fucking laying down like fucking speeches left and right, like and all that. Oh good man! Stuff. You know it's wild because then you're like, I get this, like I get it, like this is wild. And so like the whole time he kind of has like a a connection to Hydra and uh, Zemo and. That whole thing is in it. So I'm reading that. I'm like on the fourth book out of ten so far. Um, That's so yeah. really, that sounds like a really cool story really? arc. I might have to, might have yeah. to get that, that info off you. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you everything that I'm reading. I'll, uh, I'll show it to you. It's, it's really good. And so I also have a few others, one, other books that ended at Civil War II that I need to catch up on. But those can wait because I already know what happens in Civil War II. So I'll, I'll wait to read those. But uh, yeah, so that's what I'm reading. That's what I'm watching. And then uh, that, that's about it. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, Adam. So that this is where we come to. This is the end. This is the end. This is what we've. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Sad end. Until next week. Until next week. But I want to remind everybody that you can listen to this if wherever you're listening to this. You can also listen to it on our on our blog, averagenobodies.com. So if you're listening to it there, you can also search for it on your phone, on iTunes, or your podcast app. Search. Uh, make movies great again, and will be the first thing that pops up. It'll be this in our other um, podcast, just the regular average nobody podcast, which is me and Ryan, uh, Ryan and I. Um, so yeah, so if you liked what we said, give us five stars and leave us leave us a review. If you didn't like what we said, still leave us five stars, and you can tear us to pieces in the in the reviews. I don't care. Leave us right, five even, stars. Even- Hit us up on Twitter. If yeah, like. yeah, man. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, Twitter. I'll put it in the show notes again. But I am at Matt from RI, or you can reach us at at Average Nobodies. And Adam, yours is at, I am at Adam underscore Barnardino. Okay, at Adam underscore Barnardino. Again, it'll be in the show notes or in the comments. Um, so yeah, hit us up on Twitter. Talk to us. Like discuss anything. Whatever we'll we talked you. about, we yeah. Got else to do? Yep. No, nope. we we will respond to everybody that responds. There's a good chance. There's a good chance if it's uh, comic book or superhero related, we're in the middle of something about that right at the current <laughs> second. Yeah. So so, uh, so hit us up if you want to talk about comics, you want to talk about movies, or if you want to do a shout out, we'll even give you a shout out on the podcast because that's that's the kind of guys we are. We're just nice guys. We're nice guys that and, love movies and, and we, want to make them great again. We just want to make them great. We want to remove cynicism from the box office. That's what we're trying to do here. We want to have fun with movies. That's right. I'll see anything. You big I, studio I, heads, you want to throw some money at us? <laughs> you don't have to throw some money at us. Just like pay for me to exist and watch your movies. I, That's it. I, I I'll actually something good. I'll talk about them in a good way. <laughs> I actually think we would be terrible uh, case studies, I guess, for like big theater heads, because they would be like, "Okay, Matt Adam, what would you like to see?" I'm like, listen here, 
we want to see 20 more alien movies, as many <laughs> Star Wars movies as you can make, and like all these Mix fucking them up. Mix yeah, them together. And then and then we show up to the theaters, and it's only us and the executives, which is fine. And all and all the good people out there who have the fa- same feelings as us, and we just want to see movies. Yeah. So Adam. Thanks, uh, thanks for hopping on Skype and uh, doing this. Hopefully, in the su- hopefully in the future, we'll do this live. We'll do this live one of the days, and we'll have like a video actually to show the people. That would be nice. Show, show our handsome faces to the world. So <laughs> um, uh, until next week or the week after, I'm not sure what we're doing. But until the next podcast, this has been Make Movies Great Again. I'm Matt Vieira. I'm Adam Bernardino. Have a night.